Isn't the Lord absolutely wonderful? And He is glorious. He is glorious everywhere. Everywhere He turns His eyes, everywhere He sets His feet, He is thoroughly glorious. And it's an honor to gather under His Word again this morning. The last couple of weeks or so, the Lord has really been speaking to me and that's why I wanted to preach today because I wanted to share some of the things that He's just been almost searing my heart with. And I believe it's for us as a house so if you have your Bible, would you put a finger in Psalm, Psalm 126, and as Alan would always say, preferably your own finger, and uh, that's where we're going to spend most of our time today. But before we head there, would you turn with me to a wee passage in 2 Kings chapter 3. Um, and we're going to look at this story just for a second. <clears throat> <clears throat> Three kings had come together to fight against the king of Moab. But after a seven day march around the desert, they realized they were out of water and, and they were worried they were gonna die. And then the word of the Lord comes through the prophet Elisha. And this is what he says, Second, Second Kings 3 verse 16 is where we're gonna pick it up. This is what the Lord says. The dry valley, this dry valley will be filled with pools of water. You will see neither wind nor rain, says the Lord, but this valley will be filled with water. You will have plenty for yourselves and your cattle and other animals. But this is only a simple thing for the Lord, for he will make you victorious over the army of Moab. And then let's jump on down to verse 20. The next day, about the time when the morning sacrifice was offered, water suddenly appeared. It was flowing from the direction of Edom and soon there was water everywhere. And this is what I really believe right now, the Lord is saying to us, to each of our families, to each of us as individuals and to us as a house, look over the dry places, look over the wastelands, the places of empty. They're empty, but they're ready and get ready for a deluge. The voice of the one who called us to this place, the voice of the one who called you into the desert is the same voice speaking over you now, over the dry valley, over the things that we've been crying out for him to move over and upon, over our families, over our workplaces, over the places we live and the people that we love. And he's saying, this dry valley will be filled with pools of water. It's not gonna come the way that you've seen it come before. Don't look for the same places. Don't look to the sky. Don't wait for the wind to change. Don't be discouraged by blue skies above you. Don't worry that there's no wind because this isn't coming in on the wind. This isn't a downpour borrowed from somewhere else. This is coming. This water, this refreshing, this source of life that we so desperately need is coming by the hand of the Lord Almighty. And why? Because He has spoken. And when He speaks, everything changes, doesn't it? Maybe you find yourself in a place right now where you're waiting on the fulfillment of a word that he spoke a long time ago. But the difficulty is time has passed and it just keeps passing and you're still waiting. You're still believing. You're crying out in a dry place. I believe the Lord would say to you today, the water's coming. Get ready for a deluge. Maybe you've been asking for children of your own. And as yet that promise is still to be fulfilled, you're crying out to him in a dry place. I believe the Lord would say to you today, the water's coming, wait for the deluge. Maybe in your family, maybe you're living with the reality of loved ones who are wrestling with illness or going through unimaginable things that you'd do anything to rescue them from. And as yet the shift hasn't come. You're crying out in a dry place. I believe the Lord would say over your heart today, over your family today, the water's coming. Get ready for the deluge. Maybe you have the word of the Lord over your finances, over your business. Some of you, I believe this is a word for you today. You've been faithful. You're being biblical with your money. You tithe. You're generous on top of your tithe. You surrendered, surrendered to the Lord in this area of your life, but things are not yet as you know they've been promised. You're crying out in a dry place. And I believe the Lord would say to you today, the water's coming. Get ready for the deluge. 
Our king is the one who looks out over the dry valley and says this, even this will be filled with pools of water. You're gonna have more than you need, more than you need. This is an easy thing for me to do and you will see it with your own eyes. You know, whenever I was uh, thinking about this talk, I'm gonna let you in on a wee secret. I, I was wrestling with what to call it. And I thought maybe I should call it drinking in the desert, but it sounded a wee bit like <laughs> a gathering of uh, alcoholics in Nevada. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going for get ready for the deluge. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> Here's what we know, right? When the Lord speaks, we don't get to make it up. We get to come under it. And that's what I long for us to do this morning, to come under this word together. So as we jump to Psalm 126, I wanna encourage you to take heart, especially in the dry places, especially in the places you've been crying out to the Lord for a long time to come. I wanna encourage you to look with fresh eyes over that desert place. I want you to look with fresh eyes and fresh courage over the places of enemy intimidation in your life and get ready for the deluge. Let's pick it up. Psalm 126. We're going to pick it up in verse 1 and just read it the whole way through. Lord, would you minister? Would you minister from your word today and release this over us as a house and as a family and as individuals today as well and over this region? We pray it in your precious and powerful name. Nothing is too hard for you. Psalm 126, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Yes, and amen, amen. Let's have a look at this together. Verse one again, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. I love this, when the Lord restored. Not when we went after it ourselves, not when we fought back, not when we engineered things so that things would work out in our favor. No, when the Lord restored, we can trust our Savior. He's utterly faithful. When He speaks, He always acts. We just have to make sure that we don't get in the way before He acts. We are those under the voice of the Lord who find themselves in desert places at times under the instruction of his voice, these are the ones for whom the Lord fights. And when he restores, he does not do it in a small kind of way. He gives back all that the locusts have eaten. You know, when the scripture talks about this, it talks about the big locusts, the wee locusts, all of the locusts in between. I mean, the Lord is doing a thorough restoration. He doesn't just do the big things and he doesn't just do the little things. He does everything. This is the Lord who multiplies four, five, seven fold what the enemy has stolen according to the pattern of scripture because he establishes his sons and his daughters as his heirs. We're not, we're not talking about an insurance policy here. You know, when you get insurance coverage and you hope it'll just about cover you when things go wrong. This, what we're talking about today is covenant and that is entirely different. This is where our father, because of the blood of his own son and those of us who've stepped into covenant with him because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we get in on it all. It's not a little part. It's not a just enough to cover. This is the whole shebang. And it's all under covenant because we're his. So this restoring the fortunes of Zion, this is about inheritance. And because it's about inheritance, it's about the character of God. And so it is to his great honor to bring us all the way into the fullness that he's prepared for us. <laughs> I love him. He's stunning. Here's all we have to do when it comes to covenant. 
We step in by means of the death and resurrection of Jesus, and then we stay there. And then when we pop our clogs, do you have that saying here? It means when we go to be with the Lord. <laughs> when we pop our clogs, we get welcomed into the very fullness, the place where all tears are wiped away, all sorrows gone, our hearts are knit back together again, and we are forever in the presence of our beloved King. Where it gets, where we get into trouble is when we take matters into our own hands and we just step right out of covenant. And now we're not in him anymore. And we're only heirs because we're in him. So if you feel the nudge away, just step back into covenant again. He is utterly faithful and he, it is to his great glory to fulfill covenant. When we remain and we're in the place of waiting, especially when we're in the place of waiting, it lets both us and the Lord know what we believe about who he is. If we believe he's faithful, it doesn't matter how long we have to wait, we're going nowhere. If we believe he's worthy, it doesn't matter how difficult things get, how dry things get, we're staying on our faces right before him. If we believe he's holy, it doesn't matter how hard things get. It doesn't matter how long a delay comes. We are giving our yes to him in the manner that he prescribed for the rest of our days. Even if we never see the shift that we hope for in this lifetime, he is our God. I love the way the disciples said this in John 6, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. He is our God and we are His. Yes. During the pandemic, gosh, doesn't it still give you a wee shudder? <laughs> During the pandemic, the Lord showed me a very clear picture of Him readying His bride in these days. And the picture that I saw was of a gathering uh, at the gate of an airport, the gate. And uh, we were, there were loads and loads of people there and the plane was gonna go somewhere with the Lord. The Lord was on that plane. And at first everybody gathered and they were so excited to be there. They were ready to fly somewhere with the Lord. And then the wait started to happen. And the wait got longer and longer. And the more the wait went on, the more agitated some people became. They actually started to feel a little ticked off that they had been made to wait so long. Some of them started to leave. Others got bored, some got frustrated, and they left too. And as I watched, even though this group was dwindling a little bit, finally, the call came, the announcement came that the flight was ready to board, but there was a very special condition. Only those with the word hungry written on their boarding pass were allowed on the plane. And that did not apply to everybody at the gate. Everyone wanted on the plane. Everyone wanted where the plane was going, but not everyone just wanted Jesus. Well, you can imagine the scene. People were furious. They stormed off and I watched the Lord and he didn't mind one wee bit because he knew who he had chosen to go with him. Covenant is everything. Hunger for the Lord will keep you in covenant even when nothing is shifting. Hunger will keep you right before him even when things are hard, even when things are delayed, even when things seem unfair, even when people around you get annoyed and get angry, even when others step away from covenant, hunger will just keep you right there because you know who the king is and no one else will do. Romans 8, 32 tells us that when we remain in him, when we remain in Christ, everything in him is ours. And so when the Lord restores our fortunes according to his covenant with us, 
When the Lord restores our fortunes, the fortunes of those who belong to him, who refuse to quit in the waiting, who stay hungry for the living God, who remain in him. When the Lord restored our fortunes, we were like those who dreamed. You bet we were. I don't know if you've ever been called a dreamer. Depending on the context, it isn't always meant as a compliment. <laughs> I know this from school. <laughs> The implication is this, that dreamers aren't always the ones uh, with their feet on the ground. They're the ones with a head in the clouds and they're not quite in the real world. But when the Lord acts, when the Lord moves, when the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, all of a sudden the dreamers don't look like the foolish ones anymore. The dreamers look like the first ones to get in on it. If you find yourself dreaming in a dry place, in a barren place, if you find yourself dreaming in the desert, maybe you've become a little discouraged. Maybe you've even begun to believe some things that just aren't true. That maybe the Lord won't restore. That maybe he won't fulfill every single word that he's spoken. If that's you this morning, I wanna remind your heart that your father, your father, he is utterly faithful to his word and he will not let you down. It is to his great honor to fulfill his word because this is his character. <laughs> Sons and daughters always get the inheritance. The Bible says to all who receive him, Jesus, to all who receive him and believe him, those who remain in him, he gives the right to become children of God. Sons and daughters always get the inheritance. And so I'm calling all the dreamers today. The Lord himself is restoring the fortunes of Zion. The Lord himself is on the move. It's time to get ready for a serious deluge because the water he promised is coming. Let's pick it up again in verse two. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. If you've been around here for a little while, you know the Lord has been inviting us into a journey of joy recently. And I love his wisdom in it. I love the wisdom that he would ask us to make joy our native tongue. That he would allow us to think about joy being the very thing that's always on the tip of our tongue. The song that's on repeat in our hearts because it's our strength. Joy is the gift that keeps us from growing cold when we're waiting. Because we're just wrapped up. We know who it is that we've believed in. And that just fills us with joy. And when you're full of joy, you just can't grow cold. There's no room for it. Joy is the gift that keeps our hearts from becoming hard when we're hard pressed. And especially when we're still hard pressed. Joy keeps us soft. It keeps our hearts from coming hard. It keeps us soft and strong. It keeps us out of bitterness. You cannot be joyful and full of bitter. Sure you can't. It just doesn't match. It keeps us out of self-protection, thank goodness. Self-righteousness, even more thank goodness. Self-promotion, self-everything. And it marks us entirely as his. Joy is the gift the Lord gives us when the storms rage on. Joy is the gift that settles us as sons and daughters, even in the middle of extreme pain. Joy is the gift that holds us steady in seasons of delay and disappointment. Joy is the gift that quiets every other voice until all we can hear is the Lord's delight over us. It's not a bit of wonder we're singing, right? Let's have a look at the rest of verse 2. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. You see, only those marked by laughter and songs in the middle of the onslaught of enemy attack, in the middle of delay and disappointment, in the middle of barren, dry desert lands are under the vindication of the favor of the Father. And the nations are watching. Oh, the Lord is doing an expose but it's not of shame and it's not of disgrace. It's of his great love. It's, it's of his unbridled favor. It's of the restoration he brings about in the desert for his beloved ones. 
That's why we can dance our way through battlefields. That's why we can sing our way through the valley of heartbreak because we're secure in the love of our Father. And that song that he's put on our lips, that song is the sign to the nations that the Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Our song is a sign to the nation that the Lord is at work among us, that this can only be the work of his hands. And so we sing in the dry place. And as we sing, even more glory comes to him because who is like our God? Who is like our Savior? The one who takes broken and barren places, the one who takes the forsaken and the forgotten places and turns them into a place of springs. There's no one like him. Verse three, the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. The Lord has done great things for us. Now, Lord, would you restore? Lord, you have begun to act on our behalf. Father, now would you bring it to completion? There is more. I need to say this over someone's heart this morning. There is more. There is more. The Lord has restored and he will yet restore. He hasn't finished yet. The Lord has begun to act and he will yet act on your behalf. Restore our fortunes, Lord, for there is still more to restore. Restore our fortunes like the streams in the Negev. I had a little read around why the Negev and not just any old desert. And it says that the Negev is covered in dry riverbeds. I think they're called wadis, but I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It sounds like a fun word though. Wading in the wadis. I could have called it wading in the wadis. Get ready for the deluge, it's much better. Arid pathways, this is what it looks like, gullies. Arid pathways of previous downpours. But most of the time, it's just dry. It's just barren, it's just dusty. Hmm. Until the rain comes. And the way the rain comes in the Negev, it can be only a matter of minutes. And these flash floods just come through and they just wash right over everything that's been dry. Everything that's been dried up, everything that bore the scars, the reminder that this is not as full as it should be. They wore the scars of the reminder that yes, water had visited here before, but it had gone. But now, in a matter of moments, the rain comes and those places are filled again. Now the desert floor is completely, completely covered in pools. And if you came and saw the Negev at that time, you would have no idea it was a desert at all. That is what the Lord has stored up for us. I wanna remind us today that the Lord God will withhold no good thing. I wanna declare over your heart today that there is an abundance that has been held back And if it's been held back, it's been stored up. And if it's been stored up, it's for an outpouring. And when that outpouring comes, it doesn't matter how dry things have been up until now. That is getting swept up. That is getting caught up in the deluge. That's getting covered in the flood. That desert place is becoming a place of springs, a place of flooding, a place where it cannot contain the amount of refreshing, the amount of water, the amount of glory that comes. And that's why... Thank you so much. And that, yes, we can honour the Lord for that. (laughs) Guys, that's why it's so important what we do before the rain. Here's why, verse five. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. What you sow before the rain comes is gonna yield a harvest as soon as the soaking arrives. All that water, it's getting released at once. And at that time, everywhere we've sown, it's gonna be green shoots everywhere. Irrepressible, everywhere you look, it will not be able to be stopped. So you better get ready for a super bloom. For this water that changes things in an instant, in a matter of moments, it changes the terrain, it marks the earth in a way that the whole world, the nations of the whole world can see this is the hand of the Lord at work. Moments ago, 
We were just standing in the dust. Moments ago, we were just sowing in the sand, but then the Lord released the Negev streams and now it's green shoots everywhere. Moments ago, we were just waiting in the, barren, in the barrenness. Moments ago, we were just sowing in the sorrow, but then the Lord released the Negev streams and now it's green shoots everywhere. It is true that the desert was harsh. It is true that it was barren, empty, scorching, devastating, but now, now it's covered in the held back, stored up, poured out flash floods of the lavish abundance of our Father. And under this outpouring, those who sowed with tears are reaping a harvest, a super bloom harvest with their arms full and their hearts bursting with song. Yes. Verse six, those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy. I wanna remind us today that we can go out weeping, but carrying no seed. We can go out weeping and forget to bring the seed. If we pick up disappointment, we're not gonna pick up the seed. If we've picked up discouragement, we're not gonna pick up the seed. If we've picked up bitterness, unforgiveness, complaint, anger, disillusionment, offense, we will not have picked up seed. And all of a sudden, we're gonna go out with tears, but nothing to sow. Don't go out weeping with no seed to sow. That's how the enemy would have us go out, but not our Father. He understands there are gonna be times that are hard, that are gonna break our hearts, but he has purposed by his goodness that we would be filled with seed for the future so that as we go and we are weeping, we are carrying seeds for that dry, dusty soil. And he knows the streams are coming. So get ready for a deluge. Now you might say, Catherine, that sounds great, but how on earth, how on earth when my heart is broken, when all I have left is tears, how on earth do I pick up seed? Even in the driest desert, even when your heart is the most broken it has ever been, when we choose faith, when we choose heaven's instruction over our own preferences, we choose seed. We go out weeping with seed to sow, seed pregnant with future grace for an inheritance, a super bloom harvest our Father has already said is ours. Let's have a little look at Hosea 10, 12 for a moment because I think this actually is very helpful in understanding this, this uh, how to take up seed. It says this, sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. I wanna encourage you, if you're looking for seed, look for righteousness. Not our own righteousness, the righteousness of the Father, the righteousness of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Seeds look like righteousness. In other words, determining to only do things under the instruction of heaven, to only do things under the instruction and the direction of scripture, to only do things at the leading of the Spirit of God. When we're barren, when we're empty, the enemy will try to entice us to step away from that kind of righteousness so that we have no seed or whatever it is that we're carrying has nothing in it to bear any fruit. He'll entice us to change how things look to a watching world. He'll try to convince us that we don't really have the word of heaven over us at all, that our witness is being spoiled by the waiting, that our faith is useless, that we're neither seen or treasured by the Father, so we'd better take matters into our own hands. There are times in scripture where you've seen this pattern before. I'm thinking of Saul and he's waiting. The Lord has spoken over him, told him he's gonna be king. He sent Samuel to do it. And there's this moment where he has to wait on Samuel to give an offering to the Lord, but it's taken longer than he hoped. 
and he gets twitchy because people are watching and he starts to think, gosh, if I don't do this, I, I can't prove myself as king. And in that moment, he loses the kingdom. The Lord can't trust someone who does not sit under the instruction of heaven and wait until he acts. Righteousness allows us to bear the waiting, to bear the burden of the waiting, even while everyone else is watching. Because righteousness says there is a king, there is one king. There is one word that moves me. And it is only the word from heaven. Hmm. And so now, with this righteousness, all these tears, they're filled with seed. They're filled with seed because we are now completely at the mercy of the Lord moving on our behalf. Gosh, if I can do it myself, I don't think I want it. I'm not that great. But if I am dependent on the King of glory to move on my behalf, I'll wait for as long as it takes. I only want Him. We only want Him. Righteousness, it keeps us in the very spot, right there in the desert, the bullseye of where the Negev streams are going to hit. And so when we go out weeping, and we have sown for ourselves righteousness, that righteousness secures the harvest for us when the rain comes. So break up your unplowed ground. Even when it's as solid as a rock, as dry and dusty as bone when it's barren, when all you've left are the arid pathways of previous downpours long gone, break that place up because there's work to be done. This is where faith does its best work. It loves to work in that ground. It's actually a, such a beautiful gift that we get to, the fa- to give to the Father when we're just covered in dust and full of promise. Faith works that ground in the blistering heat, in the face of enemy disdain and discouragement, and it fills it with the seed of the future. The world will call it a waste, It'll call it a lost cause, but the father, he calls it pregnant. And all of a sudden, the streams come. It might be true today that we're still sowing in dry ground and barren ground, but we are gonna steady our hearts under his word in this place. We're gonna choose unwavering trust in this brutal terrain because it's not going to be barren much longer. The streams are about to break forth. The streams are about to burst on the scene. And oh, when those streams come, we're gonna rejoice that we sowed so much seed. We're gonna rejoice that we didn't back off sowing while we were still weeping. We're gonna rejoice that this weeping was pregnant, that it was full of the future. As we watch right before our own eyes, all that's been sown in raw faith burst into bloom. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return. This is a promise. They will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. We went out weeping, but we're coming home with our arms full of sheaves. Not seed, not shoots, sheaves. Full blown, full grown harvest. No longer hoped for, realized. No longer dreamed of, fulfilled. No longer hungry, satisfied. No longer shamed, loved. No longer empty, full. No longer dry, soaked to the skin. That's our King. So why don't we stand together? And we're gonna honor the Lord as holy among us, the righteous one who releases streams in the Negev who does great things as the world watches and who lavishes his beloved with his covenant goodness and establishes them in inheritance. And band, if I could ask you to come on up, please, that'd be amazing. I believe he gave us this word because he's ready to do it. And so just in this moment, This is a wonderful moment to just sow another little bit of seed before that water comes because we don't have long. So go ahead and sow. 
Even in this moment, we are just breaking up the unplowed ground. Maybe you just wanna pray. Maybe you just wanna say, Lord, here are the areas where I haven't dared to sow yet. And Lord, I just ask now that you would give me grace to plow this ground again with faith. And really all we're doing when we're plowing, we're just saying, Lord, I believe, I believe. I have come here with tears, but I know that you've put seed in my heart and in my hand. And then you just take those seeds, the words he's spoken over you. And you just say, Lord, I'm planting these again. I'm not giving up on these. I'm going back to the cupboard where I stored them and I'm bringing them right back out and I'm putting them in the ground where they belong because the streams are coming. And so just right now, why don't you go ahead? You can lift your voice to the Lord and we just say, Lord, come, help us break up the unplowed ground, all of the areas, Lord, where we've given up hope. Lord, would you come and restore us again? Would you restore our fortunes again? And Lord, we just take these things and you just go ahead and name them. You know what they are. Lord, I just thank you for these things, these things that you've put in our hearts, these things that we've carried for such a long time. I thank you, Father, for purpose, for destiny, the things that you've spoken over. Some of us have been spoken over by the Lord as children, and we've put that thing in a journal, on a shelf, in a closet, because we don't see it coming. But the Lord says, take that thing out and put it in the ground, because the seed is going to get watered any moment now. And you don't want to miss the super bloom that's coming. So Lord, yes, we say yes. Thank you. There's some of you with promises over your businesses. You're not seeing that shift. You know that you're doing all of the things the Lord has told you to do. You're not seeing the shift. Take those seeds out and put them back in the ground again. Take them back out in the ground. I see you almost lifting them out to go, oh Lord, they haven't even germinated. Put them back in the ground. They're about to. The deluge is coming. So I wanna encourage you where the Lord has spoken over your business, put that seed back in the ground again. Put it back in the ground again. Don't back off. Don't back off. The Lord who has spoken, He is faithful. He will perform every word that He has said. Maybe it's over your family today. The Lord's saying, take that seed and put it in the ground. That loved one you've been praying for for so long, that teenage son, that teenage son. Oh Lord, I just call him home right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you are still speaking your promises over him. And I just take that seed alongside you today and say, we're putting that back in the ground because the stream is coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I break off sickness in this room. I break off disappointment in this room. Thank you, Father. I break off long-term illness. I break off patterns of addiction. I break off long-term disease as well. Uh, there's been patterns of disease in your family. Today, I just break that off in the name of Jesus. And we're putting soil into the soil, the seed of faith again. We're saying, no, Lord, You have spoken over our families that it's a new day. You've spoken salvation over our families. You've spoken wholeness over our families. So we're taking that seed and we are putting it in the ground. And we are saying, come, Lord, with the streams of the Negev. Come, Lord, release them. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Father. Thank You. Wow. Wow. I see the Lord taking oil. He's shown me this a couple of times over the last couple of weeks, that we're in a rich vein, that He's given us a, a really rich well right here of oil old oil, it's precious to the Lord. And I see the Lord, He's got a watering can and He's pouring oil on the seed first. There's something about what is in the heart of the Lord from heaven that needs to go into the soil and the Lord is doing that now. So I just release that oil. I release that oil, Lord. I commission angels to release that oil in this room and to pour that over every tiny seed over every vulnerable seed. Yes, Lord, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. Thank You, Father. And if you've come here desperate for oil today, you just put your hands in the air and get it because the Lord is here and He is anointing this place again with His oil. Thank You, Father. Let it be released in this place, Lord. Everything that we need, we need You. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you. Come, come, Lord, thank you. Yes, Lord, let it be released. Let it be released. Hello, hope is a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Yes, Lord, let it be released. I 
I hear the sound of claps of thunder in the mountains. The water is coming. The water is coming. The water is coming. Get ready for the deluge. Come, Holy Spirit. of water starting. It's, it's coming. It's coming. If you're thirsty, come and take a drink. If you're dry, come and tra- take a drink. <laughs> get your shoes off. Get in the water. It's coming. I can see it coming from different places. More and more and more and more and more. It's only a matter of minutes till the place is full. If you're dry, get your shoes off and get in. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you wanna do that. Maybe you wanna do that by coming out of your seat and coming to the front. Feel free to do that. Thank you, Father. More, Lord. Let it be released. I see it filling with water. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. some of you tormented in your mind this water the Lord says there is freedom in this water the days of torment are over get in the water get in the water I take authority over every file spirit in this place and I command it to be gone I bind that thing in the name of Jesus and I command it to leave every tormenting spirit leave in the name of Jesus we speak health and wholeness and fullness and peace and joy over every tormented mind. This will not be your story going forward. This will not be the story of your children. Don't worry about your little ones. The Lord has got them safe and secure. So we just bind up darkness and we command it to leave. In the name of Jesus, come light of heaven. Come light of heaven. Oh, the
starting. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. I believe for some of us in the room today, there is household salvation. Household salvation. And so, Lord, today we just release that. We release that household salvation. Everyone, no one getting left out. Thank you, Father. For some of you, that's what you planted in the ground. And I think the Lord is saying, watch, look for the shoots. This is for you. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray especially for the prayers over prodigals for a long, 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 long time. Household salvation in the name of Jesus. Household salvation in the name of Jesus. The Lord's shalom over your family. The Lord's nothing missing, nothing broken over your family. The Lord's promise is completely fulfilled. The Lord's word as intact and as entire as it has ever been. But you get to see it with your own eyes. And so we just release that. We release that in this room today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And way beyond this room, some of you watching online, thank you, Lord Jesus. This is for them too. And so we just release it. We release it. Thank you, Lord. And if you're ready for a breakthrough, just open up and just receive. What is pouring out is nothing Oh, you've ever seen You've ever seen If you're ready So if you're ready for a breakthrough Just open up and just receive Cause what is pouring out
believe the Lord's inviting us into a faith moment here where we're just gonna start scooping up sheaves. And we're doing this prophetically. We're scooping up sheaves. We're going in for the harvest. And we're doing it prophetically. This is part of our, our gift to the Lord in faith. And so if you are ready for the harvest from a breakthrough, just go ahead and start scooping up the sheaves. <laughs> it is time to bring them home. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We are just scooping up the sheaves in faith today. Thank you, Lord. There is more. Thank you, Lord. There is more. It's more than we can contend. It's more than we can store up. Thank you, Father. It's even more than we can give away. This is abundance like we've never seen. So we just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All of your words, all of your ways, every promise. We just scoop it up. Thank you. Let it turn it in your favor. Watch him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done till it's good. So if you're ready for a breakthrough, just open up and just receive. Cause what he's pouring out Hello, joy, hello, love, hello, strength, hello, hope, it's a new horizon, hello, Let the light on in. Oh, let the 
let the light in, let the light on in. Oh, let the light in, let the light on in. Let the light in, let the light on in. for a brand new horizon we've looked at that horizon for a long time and it's always looked the same but not anymore not anymore hmm. it's not the same old horizon anymore standing in the same place but everything's changed standing in the same place but the word of the Lord has come and everything has changed standing in the same place and your feet are wet you're still in the desert but your feet are wet you're still in the dust but your feet are wet only the Lord Almighty can do this it's an easy thing for him he speaks and he acts this is an easy thing for him and not only that but the enemy the enemy gets taken out in the process and all of a sudden that old enemy you were facing is no more the Lord says your feet are in the same place but everything has changed that old enemy has changed that old horizon has changed that old dry and dusty has changed there is a river there is a river that is yours and it is watering the seeds that we planted in the dry place so now Lord let it rise up let it shoot up let all of the goodness all of the grain all of the wonder of harvest of super bloom in the desert be realized even in this moment we honor you as holy lord we honor you as holy we declare there is one who speaks and he acts and we trust we trust with everything that we have in your word lord we trust with everything that we are, that we are and that we have in your character in your covenant and we stand secure lord we rest and remain in you there is no one like you we love you we love you god of that super bloom starting to happen right there on the desert floor and then you go home and you look in your cupboard and things that were that you didn't plant the Lord has already caused to sprout and grow right there as well <laughs> it's a beautiful picture of the Lord's abundance that he would give you even what he didn't what you didn't plant I believe the Lord is bringing abundance to your home to your house where you didn't even plant that's called inheritance <laughs> and it's so kind of him that he would cause both to spread at the same time both on the negative floor and in your closet at home and in your pantry at home and in your business at home and in your workplace I just see the Lord causing this super bloom to spread even in places it wasn't planted. And so Lord, we bless your abundance today. We bless your heart today. We bless your thoughts towards us today. Nothing is too hard for you. And Lord, so I speak to unplanted seed and I just say grow grow even where you are, even where you are. This is not a hard thing for the Lord. Thank you, thank you, wow. Wow, Lord, there is just no one like you. 
We honor you, Lord. You are holy. We honor you as holy today. Thank you. things into a soft close but you can stay here as long as you want to may the Lord bless you keep you make his face shine upon you give you peace joy abundance super bloom in the desert may he lift your eyes your head with oil. May you anoint your hands and your feet with oil. May he send you on your way with singing. That it would be said among the nations, the Lord has done this. The Lord has done great. 